Hey everyone, I wanted to share with you guys a quick little craft that you can make with your students, whether it's in counseling or in the classroom as a fun little arts and crafts center with your students. And you can tie it into academics, you can tie it into social emotional learning. You could maybe do a craft like this in art class with your students and it's a fun project that they can take back with them to the classroom or take home to keep with them. But um, today I wanted to talk to you guys about how to make these cute little beads on a string. So you can come up with whatever name you want. You can use this for growth mindset, you can use this to talk about emotions, a coping tool, calming tool. You could somehow tie it into academics, whether it's like reading and teaching students about different parts of retelling, like character setting um, and those types of things. So there's lots of ways that you can use something like this, even in math, if it's like counting. Um, but anyways, before we kind of dive into that, I wanted to share with you the tools or the materials that you're going to need to make something like this. So I purchased most of these materials at Michael's craft store, but of course you can find these online at Amazon and maybe even a better deal on Amazon where you get more um, kind of a bulk of materials for a cheaper cost. But I purchased these at Michael's and I think the beads, they were maybe under $8, like $6.99 or something like that. And this comes with an assorted size of the little kind of pretend pearls and pretty little colors. I like these because you know, I know my students, especially the girls, are going to love it because it's sort of like mermaid vibes, mystical unicorns. So I'm thinking of calling this mermaid tales with my kids. Um, and then at Michael's, I also purchased this cording. So this came with four different colors and they had tons of different options, tons of different types of string. But I had purchased this one um, and I liked this set because there was another pack that came with like six or eight different colors, which I loved, but there's only five yards for each color versus this one that has seven yards. So I ended up going with this one. And um, if you do zones of regulation, this might be nice as well. You could tie in this as a coping tool or a toolbox strategy for kids if they're in the red zone or the blue zone. Um, and you could find like a yellow color string. So I also purchased this awesome set of drawers. So I absolutely love this. This is normally, I wanna say like, it's over $30, but at Michael's yesterday, it was actually $14.99. And what I look at, like about this is it comes with a ton of little um, kind of cases that you can use to store crafts. So you can put beads in it. You, I can use it for counseling. I like to make little cards for my students, like sorting cards for emotions or size of the problem, hypothetical scenarios. So I'm gonna use that for um, these for that type of activity. And again, we do zones in my building. So I'm planning to um, come up with different activities based on each zone and put it in here and just sort it. So it's gonna be an easy way when I'm doing a counseling group, I can just grab this, grab the color of whatever zone we're focusing on for that week or that day and um, do the activity with my students. So a helpful tip, if you're watching this the day I post it, Michael's Craft right now, they have um, some coupons. So if you are subscribed to them, check your email or your junk mail because you might have a 60% off coupon. And a helpful tip for those of you who are educators, definitely use your teacher discount when you go to Michael's Craft Store and you get 15% off. So when I purchased my uh, materials from Michael's, I used the 60% off coupon on top of my teacher discount, 15% off. And I also was able to use another coupon that was like 20 or 25% off. And I did share those coupons in my stories on Instagram. So if you follow me, uh, my Instagram handle is at school psych, Amanda G, all one word. And um, if you go into my stories, you'll be able to find those two coupons, the 60 and 20 or 25% off coupon and um, take a screenshot of it. And I'm not saying it definitely will, but hopefully if you use that, it'll work for you at checkout. Some other helpful tips really quick. Um, Michael's Craft does accept competitor coupons. So definitely check like AC Moore, Joanne Fabrics to see if they have better coupon deals and um, take a screenshot of those coupons. And when you're at the register, show them. Or if you're at Walmart or Target, I believe they also accept competitor coupons. So I, I, if you're like me, I love a good deal and, and I love to save money and kind of get more bang for my buck. So those are just some helpful tips. But anyways, going back into this activity. So these are the beads I picked. It's a value pack. Um, and it's, this is the name of the set I got. So it's by the brand Bead Landing. And I like this because it came with different size beads. And for this activity, I kind of went through and picked out the um, larger size beads because the holes on those are a little bigger, so it'll work better for the activity. Um, just some helpful tips. As I was making this, it 
you know, at first it was kind of easy to slide the string through the beads, but as you kind of go along, the string starts to sort of um, begin to fray. So it definitely was making it harder. So by like the third beat, I was having a really hard time being able to pass the string in the second time around. So I was able to do it the first time, but then when I'm trying to pass the other end through the bead, it was really difficult for me to do. So I had to get a little crafty and um, on my spare time, kind of a coping tool, I guess you could say that I like to do is I love making jewelry myself. So I have tons of materials. So I used one of these little, um, I don't know if it'll focus, but I used one of these little tools for like when you're making jewelry, because I tried using a sewing needle, but the little hole was like way too small for this string to fit through. So I kind of made a makeshift needle and bent the loop from this little piece um, enough so that it would fit the string through it. And I kind of like smushed it down using a plier and then threaded the um, the cord through the end so it was like a needle. And then what I would do was I would stick the string through one side of the bead and then using this, I would slide the other side of the string through the bead and I had to use the pliers to like grip the end of this and kind of pull it all the way through because it would it would get stuck. Um, so just a note, you might want to try to find beads that have like larger holes so that you can fit the string through both sides at the same time. Um, I do know, and I, I just couldn't find mine, but I know at Michael's Craft Store that in the jewelry section, they sell tools that you can use for beads, like to make the holes a little bigger. And I have one, I just, for the life of me, I could not find it today. So I sort of got creative and made my own little thing. But I'll show you guys in another video how to make this, but today I just wanted to share with you um, how to use this in counseling. So the way this works is you count however many beads you want. So on this one, I have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight beads. And what I did with this was I'm planning to use this in counseling as a calming tool for the kids. So what I'm going to do is the students will take the string of beads, so I'll have them make it in counseling, and what I'll do is I'll teach the kids to take some deep breaths. So you put your hand on the bead, take a deep breath in, and then model that for the students, and then as they breathe out, tell the students to slide the bead up to the other end of the string. And then they go back, take a deep breath in, and then as you're breathing out, slide the other bead to the other end. And then just model for the students. So you can use five beads, you could use four beads. Honestly, you can use however many you want. You just want to make sure that the string is long enough so that you have space to leave at the end when you tie the little knot. So that way you can move the beads around. So again, take a deep breath in. And then as they breathe out, slide it up to the other end and kind of pull along it so that it stays a little straight. It's a little hard to do one-handed. Um, but again, I'll share another video on how to make this. It's super simple and the materials are really cheap and you can get the materials at a cheap cost and make a ton of these with your students. So other ways you, you can use this is for kind of growth mindset. You can have the students connect a positive affirmation to each of the beads and that can be kind of like a gentle reminder for them to be kind to themselves, use positive self-talk, like I can do hard things. I just have to try my best. I won't give up. And then for each one, they just slide it to the other end. So those are some simple ways that you can use this as a coping tool or have them connect a different toolbox strategy or coping skill like talking to an adult. I can draw a picture. I can ask to take space. And the more that you have the students practice this and kind of say these things to themselves, the more innate it's going to become and they'll be able to do it on their own. And ideally, you know, especially in zones of regulation, the goal is that students are able to self-regulate. So not needing the adult as much in the process of kind of identifying their emotion and being able to on their own figure out a healthy and positive coping tool. You can also use this for um, social skills. So maybe for each color, you come up with like a color coded paper and it could be a reminder like the purple, make eye contact, the kind of grayish one, making sure that your body's facing the speaker. So use this for activities like whole body listening. In reading, you could kind of simplify. So think about like the steps of retelling a story and just use the number of beats per the number of steps. And then as the kids um, are reading the story, ask them to tell it back to you. So who was the character? What was the main event? What was the setting of the story? So think about it in those kinds of steps. Of course, for math too, this could be a really good um, 
counting activity, sort of a manipulative for students. So based on however many number of beads, you could maybe put 10 and have the kids use this to practice addition and subtraction. So in the younger grades, you could have them, you know, write out a problem like two plus three or four minus two, and then they have to slide the beads back and forth and then count the beads. So use one-to-one -one correspondence to count the beads and figure out what the answer would be. So I hope you guys find that helpful and um, you know, that it maybe just gives you another idea of how to incorporate something simple like an arts and craft activity into something academic or counseling related. And again, I will definitely show you guys how to make this. Um, it's just hard to do it obviously one handed so I need to kind of get a better setup so I can have something to hold my phone as I make it for you guys. And what I did too is I had, because I used to make jewelry, I have these little cute pouches. So this might be nice if you make this in counseling or in class. Just give the kids one of these and these you can find these everywhere you can buy them in um, bulk on Amazon Michael's craft store I purchased a lot of these at the dollar store so you could get like a pack of five or so for like a dollar at your local dollar store or a craft store and then it's just a cute little bag it could be kind of like a calming tool for the kids so a nice little bag and then they can put it in it stick it in their pencil box put it in their pocket i mean it's super lightweight it's something easy the students can carry it around with them if you wanted to use this with zones you could buy beads that are zones related um colors and then use that with the students and that could be a check-in as well so if the student is feeling a certain emotion they could slide the beads back and forth to indicate how they're feeling so again lots of ways to get creative with arts and crafts and tied into academics and social emotional learning so i hope you guys found that helpful and even the coupon tips helpful when you're shopping if you do something similar similar like this with your students definitely share send a message leave a comment um, I'd love to get some other ideas from you guys. So thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye everyone.